available later. Uh, so you'll be able to access it and uh, look back over this material. There's a couple things I'm going to do today. I know uh, those of you who are here, if you will see, I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop just so I can pull some things out and make life easier for me. So I'm going to share my desktop and probably pop up my extremely cluttered desktop. I'll pull this over here. I'm going to pull a chat out so I can see it. And I'm also going to pull participants out so I can see that. You'll notice on your left-hand side or under your participants, you've got a hand icon. So you can raise your hand. You see me raising my hand right now. Of all of those present, how many of you, if you have your students already in the Network Essentials course, raise your hand? So it's down at the bottom of the chat or kind of the participants. You can see that. Or just type into the chat that you've got them in the Network Essentials. You've created a course for them and have them there. All right. I don't see nobody's responding, so everybody's going, I have no clue. Sorry, I was taking a look at Viral, which is a simulation engine for Cisco. No, okay. Now, Heroku, you don't have it in there yet, but we'll, we're going to get you there. They're in yours. Okay, so Jason's got a class created. All right, so what I want to do, first off, uh, we do have the Network Essentials course. Um, and just a quick overview again for instructors on how to create a course. Uh, right now, if you needed to create a Network Essentials course, um, okay, I think it says they're in there. I'm, Heroku, I might have to get you through this course because I don't have you enrolled right now. I got to get your instructor information from uh, John Nelson and I'll contact him. And so, okay, Nikki's got them rolled in four. What four do you have them in? All four? Nikki, you've got them in Networking Essentials, Intro to Cybersecurity, Cybersecurity Essentials, and Linux Essentials. Did you do all those? That's one of my goals today is to talk about Linux Essentials. That would be the four. Word, okay. Well, here is how we can create a course in Netacad. If you've got an instructor account, which all the instructors do, you go to create a course. In the drop down box, you're going to see uh, it will be Virginia Beach Schools. For us, I'm going to use our Stanley Community College CA. You will see BA, BB Schools or the uh, one school that you're in, the Cisco Academy. You have to give it a name. So let's say I'm doing a networking essentials. And in Roku, this would be you creating a networking essentials course. Course ID, I always make it the same. A lot of times I'll do networking essentials. And for you, I would actually call it Net S and then what dash the high school name. So I'm at the North Stanley. So I'm saying North Stanley. Now, obviously, you won't have North Stanley, but that's where I went to high school many, many moons ago. And so that will be my course ID. And then when I go to select the course, I will go down to networking essentials. I will select language and version, probably English 1.0 right now. And then start date. And I would just make it today's date. And then push it out as far as you want. And I would say go ahead and make this out to April or May if it allows, because obviously the contest is not until June. You will see yourself as a qualified instructor. And then you would click save. And at this point, assuming I didn't do anything wrong, which I didn't, I don't believe, I will have a new course here, Net S North Stanley. Now, if you are going to enroll students here, you're going to go in. You're going to go into the, and well, let me go back because it's a little confusing here. Uh, I always tell people Gears of War, the cog, right here's the cog beside the class. Go to the cog and go to this cog, and then you will do add seats. And this is especially for um, your students who have never had a Cisco course before, or you can do just add new. And then you put in their first name, last name, email address, and then you can put a student ID if you wish to do so. That's probably the easiest way if you only have four or five students are going to be entered. Um, if you have more than four or five students, then this is where you can use the add seats and you can actually get seat tokens. And with seat tokens, these tokens can be used to enroll students. And I'll show uh, that process to Roku later on Friday. But that's one way to do it. If you have new students who have never accessed the course, then they can actually go into 
netacad.com, which is where we're going. So we're going to netacad. The only reason I'm opening a different browser is so I can show this to you. And when you go to login, there's a thing that says redeem seat token. So you can click here and then you can say, I am new to the academy if I do not have an account. And then you can put in the information yourself and then they can be enrolled in the course. Now, that means you don't know what email address they put in. So you may want to use an email address that you know they have access to in the classroom so you can check it. But that's adding students with a token to a class that's been created. Most of you have students in classes already. If you do, there's going to be a slightly different process. Now, what I want you to do as soon as possible is actually add your students into three other classes. And those are going to be the intro to cybersecurity. Sorry, I'm making a note for myself, so I remember to put this in the synopsis email. The cybersecurity essentials and the Linux Essentials course. And I'm going to show the Linux Essentials course as my last, one of my last items here. Right. So we're going to go in here. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to, so I don't have so much clutter, I'm actually going to show you how to delete a course. Um, normally, you, have, you remove all the students that are in the course, uh, turn off all assessments, but, and then delete the course. But since this course was never published, I can just delete it and have no worries. All right, so I'm going to create a new course. John, do you have a question? That's hand up. And that course is going to be one of the courses I'm asking you to do, which in this case is going to be Intro to Cyber. So I go Intro Cyber dash, and then again your school name. Same thing here, here. And then you go down and find the class Introduction to Cybersecurity, select version 2.0. It's the only English version available. Select the start date you want, which I would just go ahead and start it today. I, I actually went. By the way, today's Pearl Harbor Day, um, 75th anniversary, I believe. So let's remember that as a major milestone for the country. Set an end date and set save. And I will now have an introduction to cybersecurity class, but there are no students in the class. So again, we go to that Dear the Work talk. We go to edit. And for all of you, since you've already had students that you put in that first networking essentials class, the easiest thing to do is add existing. And then you can actually look for the class that you had previously. So just go to, for me, I've got 10,000 schools because I'm, I've been in this so long. And then you can actually select a course, and then that course would have all of the students from your previous course. And then you can just select them. So I'm just going to do one real quickly that I know has got some people in it. Um, I'm trying to find one that's not going to be a huge issue here. Okay, I don't actually have one I can show you. But basically, if I select one of these courses, uh, it would pull in the people who are in that course. And since nobody's in this course, it's not going to show anybody. But if there were people in the previous course, so your networking central course that you have made, you just select all the users you want, click Add, and boom, they'll be in there. So you only have to create a user account once. And then you're able to add them into your courses. So you'll want to do that for each one of your courses that I've described to you. So intro to cybersecurity, cybersecurity essentials, and Linux essentials. Now notice there's one problem. You created a course, you put students in, but you have not published the course. Remember we talked about that in class or in our item, make sure um, our meeting, make sure you go in here and click post the course. Otherwise the students will not see it under their learn tab when they go into uh, Medicaid. Once you publish it, the modules are available and the students can start going through the materials. And you'll notice this is built just like our previous. It talks all about the need for cybersecurity, what it is, online identity, those items. So that is creating a course. 
questions about that? All right, you will notice in each course that there are uh, labs and there are packet tracers. I'll come back to those in a second. It's important to note that some labs require you to use your own gear, your own equipment. So you may need two PCs connected to a switch. You can use your PC at home for most of the uh, labs and networking essentials. But we will have a thing called packet tracer that I'm gonna show you in a few moments. I wanna show though something very, very cool. And that is a class called Linux Essentials. I'm going to say Linux ESS dash North Stanley. Again, we're keeping our same naming convention. You would use your school name. And then you're going to go in with the course ID and you're going to select the course that is Linux Essentials. I got to find it. It's down here, Partner NDG Linux Essentials. Click there, English 1.0, start date today end date and we can go all the way out to June again if you wish June 30th which we actually passed the competition now this course again you have to do the exact same thing you have to create it you have to add your students into it so now we've got it created we've got to go to the cog don't forget that we've got to add our students in add existing just like before okay and then once we get done, we have to publish the course. So we still have to go in here and publish the course. So the same steps for every course. It's not anything super difficult. But one of the amazingly super cool things about this course, the labs are built in. So in other words, I'm reading chapter four. So I go into chapter four here and I can load it in a new window. And you have to agree to these terms and conditions. And basically it says that they're providing the labs free of charge, and we uh, don't you know, know, promise they'll be available, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. I got to relaunch the window. So let me do that again. Aaron Thurman, please dial so I'm going to check four. Aaron Thurman, please dial and it's going to load the content. And this is an entire course on Linux. It's how Linux works, what Linux is. But here's the super cool thing. This class has built into it a virtual machine that boots over here. So here's an Ubuntu box sitting here that has, you know, um, who am I, who am I logged in as. It's got all the functions of an Ubuntu box, and you can do your labs directly on this particular box. You don't have to go out to NetLabs. You don't have to go out to, a, you don't have to load a Linux on a machine in your lab. It's all right here. You can do whatever you want um, within reason. Um, so I got a test directory now. And so you can do all kind of stuff. It's, it's basically, it's a fully functional built-in Linux box for you to use. So once your instructor gets you in this course, you can go and you can start looking at the course, okay? And you can go straight to the, uh, to the content. I'm gonna close this. You can go to your modules and you can start learning this material about Linux. So if you've ever been interested in Linux, and by the way, you're gonna need Linux, because that's one of the things that's going to be on the uh, on the exam. Obviously, there's an entire Linux section. So you're going to need to know Linux. And you can sit here and go through this course completely free and learn all about Linux and its different parts. Here's key terms. Here's a object for this particular introduction to Linux. Now, there's actually an, an exam that's covered by this. It's called the uh, LPIC Linux Essentials. And you can take that exam in your classroom and get a certification that gives you Linux Essential Certification. So this is one of the four courses you will be part of. So as a student, right now you're gonna be in four courses. You're gonna be in Networking Essentials, which teaches you basic networking. All right, I'll take us back to that course here in just a second. You're gonna be in Introduction to Cybersecurity, which gives you a taste of cybersecurity and the beginnings of what you're gonna be looking at in cybersecurity. You're then gonna be in a Cybersecurity Essentials course that delves a little bit deeper into cybersecurity. 
And finally, you're in the Linux Essentials course. Now, whatever order you and your instructor or your mentor decide that you're going to go through those, it's fine. But I, I really suggest you do Networking Essentials. And then probably at the same time, you can play with Linux Essentials and then hop into your Cybersecurity uh, Essentials. These materials are all there. And you don't have to cover every single bit of it. But one thing I would suggest is in each one, please do at least one quiz. Um, that allows you to show up as actually being a participating student, which will help your Cisco Academy down the road with growth and with uh, uh, basically it will grow your, your academy so it'll look better for Cisco. Um, let me show you. Here's a Network Essentials course. Okay. Now, by the way, course index, you can always click on course index and you can find all the packet tracers that are available. And I'm going to talk about packet tracer here in a second. The lab index, okay, those are, these are the physical labs that you can do. So like building a simple network, here's, here's a PDF that shows you how to build a simple network. So if you have two PCs and a switch, and it can be any kind of switch. It doesn't have to be a Cisco switch. And this just walks you through configuring the PCs with an IP address. If you've never done a static IP address. It literally walks you through the process of assigning a static IP address to each PC. Then shows you the IP config command. And again, I don't know what level all of you are at, uh, but this is obviously basic things that are in part of networking that you're going to need to know for anything we do in our security um, test or security contest that's going to come up. And you may be way past this, but really it's not a bad idea even to reinforce these basic concepts. You also have um, in this course index, you uh, can see different items being covered. I'll also make you aware, and this was just, I just started this, but I probably didn't send this out to all of you yet. But I do actually have on my YouTube channel, I have lectures on chapter one and chapter two. And so if I return to the class, I can actually pull up under modules. And I'll send, I think I gave all of you access or showed you where my YouTube channel was, but it's just uh, KCARL 52, and here's a lecture on Chapter 1. So if you want a full lecture on Chapter 1 and on Chapter 2, it's available. Okay. So I go through everything in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. The rest are on their way. Um, it's just uh, I've got to get those recorded, so I've got to do that this week. But Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 are completed. And again, if you just go to YouTube and search for KCAUDL 5282, actually it's KCAUDL 52, you should find me. Um, and you'll find my channel. Ignore the dog pictures and the, the duck hunting videos. <clears throat> just go to the playlist that's uh, the playlist for uh, Networking Essentials, which has been added recently. So. Any questions on that before we go a little bit further into packet tracer? All right. So we're in networking essentials. We want to do the lab. All right, so we're in chapter three. And we want to do the lab on, which is called packet tracer introduction. Learn to use packet tracer. Well, first off, we've got to get packet tracing, all right? To do that, the easiest way for the is for the instructors, okay, to give you, give you access. But you also can do this. Once you're inside of the course, once you're inside of Netacad, if you will go along the top to resources, you should see download packet tracing. Now, if the students don't have this, you can download it for them. But if you click Download Packet Tracer, you will then see there's one version, a 64-bit or a 32-bit for Windows, and one for Linux. So if you actually want to do it, they're actually mobile versions. So you can put this on your tablet if you want to. I beta tested it. It's pretty good. Um, it's a little hard to use sometimes, but it is available. So you want to try that. But here's the download right here that you can grab it from. Now, instructors, if you want to download it and put it into your course, you can do that and just make a link to it inside the course, or you can just give it to give it to the student on a flash drive. Either way, but once you have Packet Tracer installed, you need or downloaded, you need to install it. So you'll just run through a normal install process and install it on your PC. Now you can install it at home. It has it absolutely will not cause any problems on your PC at home. So don't be afraid to, to install it. 
You will then have Packet Tracer on your machine. And so I'm going to open Packet Tracer, and you will see what Packet Tracer is. Packet Tracer is a simulation engine, a very good simulation engine. Now, I will tell you this. No one's ever been hired for using Packet Tracer. Uh, you'll never see a job listing that says two to five years of Packet Tracer experience. Having said that, okay, this is a very good tool to do things in a quick prototype way. For instance, I can actually do that first lab that we talked about that was two PCs and a switch. I grab a switch, pull it out here. I go down here and find end devices. Okay, so I pull out a generic PC and a generic PC, and I click on my connections and do Ethernet connections, and I connect the fast Ethernet to, all I'm doing is left clicking. I'm just clicking the, the connection, fast Ethernet to here, all right? And then I've got two PCs connected. Now, the only negative is they don't really have the full desktop interface. You, know, you, you can put an IP address on them, so I can do 192.168.1.10 with a 24-bit mask, all right? And I can go back into this PC and put an IP address of 192.168.1.11. And if you don't know what those are, that's okay. Chapter 4 of Networking Essentials talks about IP addressing. So I don't expect you to know all this. I know I'm going very quickly. But be aware, the tools are here. There's IP config. Now I can ping 192.168.1.10. And now I'm pinging across this link to my other PC. So Packet Tracer is that tool that will let you do all types of networking simulations. You can pull out a router. Eventually, you'll learn how to configure routers, especially if you decide to move on and do some things in, in networking. You, and watch this. Here's something really neat. You don't have to put in a Cisco router. You can go down here, look at network devices. Okay? And if I'm not mistaken, there should be... Right here, smart cards, generic, there's a snipper. There's even a, all kind of, uh, um, oh, hold on a minute, I'll get it. There's all kinds of Internet of Things devices here. Here's so even a cell tower. And I'm trying to find my, there's a, actually a multi-layer switch. Hubs, hubs are of the devil. Here's a wireless router. Oops, well, it helps if you don't click. Shut! Bad when you do it twice. I had the delete button selected. But here's a wireless router that I can actually set up wireless on. I'm going to GUI and set up wireless. So I can set different modes. I want wireless in only. SSID, um, test. I'm not going to set anything else other than that. But I can actually set these settings, and then you can actually bring out a wireless client and, and create wireless clients. So there's all types of things that are available in packet tracing. Now, obviously, I've been using it for a while, so I know how it works. Well, the beauty of it is your, one of your first labs in this course in Networking Central is in Chapter 3. And in that Chapter 3, you've got a packet tracer that teaches you how to use Packet Tracer. And so I'm going to close this one because I've already got it open. I don't want that. And I just go in here and see this PKA file. Once I have Packet Tracer installed, when I click here, it downloads it. And then when I click the PKA file, that is the file extension that is for Packet Tracer. And it will open it up inside of um, Packet Tracer. And you just click OK here. It's fine. If you really if you want to use your activity or actually use your meta catalog, you can. But now I'm sitting, I can sit here and I've got a complete lab. So it says here, select end devices. And we'll go here, network devices, end devices. And it says, in the options, drag and drop three generic PCs. So it's generic, one, two, three. And so it's walking me through, select switch. So it says, select switch from the options, left hand corner. We go here and we find switches down here. Drag a 2960. Okay. And it then will then walk you through the connection. So what I just did, it shows you how to do. And it walks you through it. And then it shows you, 
Right now we're in what's called real time mode. There's even a simulation mode, and when you put it in simulation mode, everything goes step by step by step. So this tool is used in a large number of our different labs in order to allow you to simulate networks when you may not have equipment at home, or even you may not have equipment there in your lab, it allows you to do a simulation. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here for a second and ask if there are any questions from students or from instructors. No questions at all. You can hear me, right? Hello? See me waving, correct? Everybody can hear me. It's okay to speak. No, no way. Okay. Does packet trace have to be installed by user on a machine? Yes. It does have to be installed on each machine that you're going to be running packet tracer on and trying to do packet tracer activities. All right. Packet Tracer tutorial. All right, here's something that's really cool. Uh, you can actually, believe it or not, you can actually create a course to put your students in. And I believe it's in here. It's not, it's a, yep, Packet Tracer Know How, Packet Tracer 101. You can actually put your students into a class that is on Packet Tracer. It's supposed to be a one hour class roughly. So you do PT dash North Stanley. And then you can actually put them in that class. And it's got the basics of Packet Tracer. So that's a really good thing to put them in. More questions. Definitely that's another good one. I'll put that on there, intro to Packet Tracer. I know students, you may be sitting there going, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Realize the contest is not until June of next year. So we're really getting you started early. I wanna give you all the tools that you can use so that you will be prepared and you'll be excited about IT and technology. There's a lot of cool things that we've got here that we're giving you. Honestly, most of the time people pay for access to this. You know, these are classes that what you're getting into are things that we teach at the community college level that people pay to get into. And so we're giving you access to it. And especially when I show you the competition server, which is gonna be something that many, many people pay to get into. Um, we have several hundred every, every eight weeks who, who pay to access machines very similar to that. All right, um, any other questions? All right, I wanna do one quick thing here. I wanna go into our course index. And I want to pull up a true packet tracer activity that is an activity that actually has you doing something. So here I'm going to do um, configuring the initial router settings. So you actually can do, even though you don't have a router, even if you don't have a router in your classroom, here's a packet tracer that will walk you through configuring a Cisco router with basic configurations. So it's gonna pop up. And of course, this is the one that doesn't have the actual thing that. A524, should remember that one? When I just had an instructor go, hey, that ain't working. Let's do basic switch connectivity. Then you'll prove I'm not lying to you. So this is live 8513. You'll see there are two switches and there are two PCs. And you also see that it walks you through. And here's the neat thing about Packet Tracer that I really like too. Click on S1, all right. It says go to the command line interface. Done, hit enter. All right, I'm type enable, which is the command that gets you into privilege exec mode. And actually, well, it talks about that in the, uh, in the class itself once you read the material. Yes, you do have to read, believe it or not. I know that's sad, but now check this out. When you do hostname S1, look what immediately happened. I immediately scored one point out of 90. And as I move on down, 
I go into line con, and by the way, you will learn as you work on Cisco devices that you can shorten things. Line con zero, password Cisco. Notice points. I should get points. I got another point. And so as you go through this, it will give you points. And if any time you want to see how what your results are, you can do check results. It will actually show you what you've done correctly and what you've missed. All right. And you can click close. It takes you right back so you can complete the lab. So there's a running tally of what your current score is on this particular packet tracer. Kind of neat. I've been in a, parent conference. a lot of fun. Hold on one second, folks. Sorry, folks. There was a uh, loud crashing noise from my coworker's office, and so I went to check what it was, and the picture had fallen off the wall, fell off the wall, and hit the ground. So, um, but back where we're, it gives you completion, and you'll be able to see uh, what you've done correctly and what you've messed up. So, if I went in here and did, uh, I said I did password, and say I mistyped it, C S C O. All right, should remove the points, and it does. Okay. And when I check results, it actually will show me that on S1, I've got the password wrong on the console line. It's a pretty cool, neat tool, little simulation tool, and it's used throughout all of the courses. It's used in uh, Cybersecurity Essentials. It's used in Networking Essentials. It is not used in Linux Essentials because we've got that built-in uh, Linux box that we use for all our labs. So that's the only thing it's not used in there. So that's Packet Tracer. Any questions about Networking Essentials, about Packet Tracer, or about kind of the framework of what we're looking at doing? Basically, you're going to go in here as students, and you're going to have a Learn tab. And you'll probably just see your Learn tab. You won't have the manage. And you've got an interface that looks something similar to this, and you will see the courses you're enrolled in. Then to get into those courses, you'll click on it and go in the course. And then you'll be in the exact same thing I was in before. Okay, so it's the intro to cybersecurity uh, course. And again, in the intro, there's not as much as far as there are no packet tracers, there are no real labs other than just doing hands-on labs that allow you to do things like ha comparing hash data. So here's a, using a, um, a tool to do um, comparing hash values for, for different files to see that how when you change a, a, a file, the hash value changes for SHA and H. MD5 and, and those types of things. Okay, so part of your work is going to be in netacad.com. That's actually where a large amount of your work is going to be. As you get comfortable with that, we're going to move you over and give you access to this system, which is competitions.stanley.edu. This particular server houses four different courses right now. There's a Network Plus course that gives you labs for it. There's a course uh, on Security Plus. There's a very cool NDG uh, ethical hacking course. And then there's an NDG forensics course. All right. Now, what I will be doing is I will be putting each of you students, I've just I've thought about this a great deal on how the easiest way to do this. And I was originally going to do individual classes for students, but that's going to be uh, way too hard to really manage. So I'm going to put all the students into these courses. So in the Network Plus course that the instructors are in currently, I'm going to put all the students in here too. Um, and I'll put all of this is everybody that's already in here. And so we've got folks in here that have done those. And we will make all the students in there, your instructor tasks are in there, and, and, and just make it simpler. Once you are in that particular course as a student, okay, you're going to be able to go in and you're going to be able to schedule yourself time on this server to do labs.
to do that, and in fact, let me do something. Let me pull this over. And let me log in as my student account. Hopefully none of you are doing keyboard sound detection on me. You will want to do this remote access test. And if you're in Chrome, it actually downloads the JNLP. Then you have to click to open it, which is a pain. But that's just what Chrome does because it's uh, a Java issue. You must have Java installed in order for this competitions.stanley.edu server to work. So now, this is what you will see as a student. You will need to go to Scheduler and then pick your course. Now, like I said, you will be in four courses. You'll be in the Ethical Hacking, Forensics, Network Plus, and Security. We're going to start with Network Plus. And so you'll click Network Plus. There are 12 possible labs. You'll click the lab you want. And then you'll pick a pod, and there are, I think, 15 pods total. Actually, yep, 15 total pods. Pick any of them. And by the way, if you know you're going to have time next Sunday, the 11th, and you're going to have time at 7 p.m., you can do a future reservation. So you don't have to do it on just today. You can actually make reservations in the future. The only thing I ask is if you make a reservation, try your best to use it. I'm going to make an immediate one. I'm going to click here, and you can do up to four hours as a student. And now you will see that I've got a reservation from 3.14 p.m. till 5.30 p.m. If I click Enter Lab, it'll say that it's starting equipment. This system is super cool because it's actually a Cisco UCS sitting in a closet that when we start up these pods, it actually starts virtual machines. Those virtual machines are booted. They're put on the correct VLANs. They're configured to be able to communicate with one another in terms of what's needed for the, the base lab functionality. And so you get access to all these machines in this environment. When you start doing the ethical hacking, you'll have a, uh, a collie box you can use to do hacking with. Um, you've got all kind of little snippers, and it's a really neat course there. It takes a little bit for the equipment to start because this is truly virtual machines booting up and starting on the server. So we'll let that happen. Any questions while this is booting up? How, how far advanced? Uh, are you asking about how far advanced do you need to do the reservations, John? Is that your question, John? As, as far as how far in advance do you need to do your reservations, uh, it just depends on when you want to do the actual lab. Like I said, it usually takes between, I'd say, up to five to six minutes for the pod to boot, depending on what pod it is. So it is booting. Other questions? Correct. Your, 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 your kids don't have it yet because if you've created them accounts, I need to know that those accounts have been created. Did you put them in the class? They're getting no pods. Oh, really? Okay, I'll check that. Megan, I'll check that. Let me, in fact, I'll pop up in a different browser and jump over as admin over here and check it. You see the pod is booted. I'm going as admin on the screen over here that you don't see. I've actually got three screens, and by the way, that's that's the way to live right there, having three screens. Uh, once you get into a, okay, you created your own class, didn't you, Megan? Okay, you've created your own class. I'm going to have to move because of the way, because of the way this system is set up. I actually um, have allocated those 15 pods we created just to that one class. I'm going to be moving them over to the other class. If that's okay with you. I'll actually move them out of this out of this class and put them into uh, the Network Plus class, and then they'll have access. That's no problem. I, that was good. I, I mean, that's that's wonderful. It'll make it easy for me to move them over. 
Um, but it, it, I think for simplicity's sake, it'd be best just to have everybody in one set of pods. Yep, I got it. I see it now. When I went in as admin, I can see it. But I'll uh, I'll move those students over, and then then they will have access to the pods. Basically, when we create a class as administrators on our end, we can assign pods to that class. And we didn't we don't have any pods assigned to that class, so we'll just move them over. I'll get that done as soon as we get off today, get off this this call. Um, so let's say you do have access. Well, you can click Show Live Content, and this gives you the Word document that you need to use and you need to read. Again, students, you need to read. That's hard to believe, but you can read it, and it talks about the live settings, okay, what the required uh, uh, passwords are. And it says things like this. Now, normally, so it says click on Windows 2K8 R2. So let's go in here. Windows 2K8 R2. And let me see if I'm supposed to be doing internal or external. By the way, this is nice when I got multiple. You can't see it, but I just moved it over to another. Well, I don't want to move that one over there. I was going to move this one. I'll move this over here. Ever had a problem with a remote access test? Okay. Anybody having a problem with a remote access test? Anybody having problems with it from school? Now, normally what happens is if you have problems, you need to uninstall Java completely and then install the newest version of Java. That typically fixes the problem. I also would try a different browser um, because sometimes Chrome has Java disabled, uh, but you can make it work in, in Firefox or in, in Internet Explorer. Do not suggest Edge. Uh, at all. So use an IE. Okay. I would try again uninstalling Java completely and install the latest version. That typically fixes most of the remote access test problems. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna bring this lab down here just to make it little keep doing it wrong going. So it says click on the R2 icon. It corresponds to the machine you wish to log into. So I clicked here. And when I click on it, it opens up another JNLP, which I need to keep and I need to run. And that's the aggravating part of Chrome. And I really need to upgrade the latest version of, of Java myself. I'm like one or two versions behind. But here's something wild. If you try to hit Control or Delete, it's not going to work because that's going to be on your PC. You need, and it even tells you here, use the PC menu to send control delete. And when you do, it will give you the password, which is capital P at SS W zero RD. And now guess what? You have access to a server 2008 R2 box. The cool thing about this is there's an, an entire lab here for you to walk through. It tells you review the OSI model, uh, run Wireshark. Wireshark's installed here so you can run Wireshark and play with it. There's an antivirus on it. All types. Of, I mean, basically, this whole lab is here for you to for you to go through. But the beauty of this is, let's say I finish the lab, and then I don't know where you're at in terms of what your knowledge of Windows is. Let's say, you know, I want to I want to turn this into a I want to turn this into a, a domain controller. You know what? You can do that. So you could play with this lab, and you could sit down, and you could say, well, I've got this internal machine here. Okay, so I got this one internal and this Windows 2K. I could actually create two domain controllers and really play with Windows. And that's not even part of the lab as far as what's actually in this lab for networking essential. But it's a toolbox. It's a sandbox. Nothing you do will be kept when you end the reservation. So be aware of that. You can make change. Okay, it's so Nikki said, Kelly Shane, how have you covered the Java Google issue and how to bypass? Java Google issue and how to bypass. Uh, no. You want to tell me? Because I mean, I'm all ears. If there's a way to quickly bypass that. So, I mean, here again, you can do this whole thing if you wanted to. Have a Google issue on how to bypass. Uh, no, I haven't. 
There is a way to make the GNLP file run automatically. Um, and I believe it's the latest Java version will make it work. But if you've got you know, a way to do it, please let me know because I get tired of clicking that all the time. Could not start up the. Because of Google. Nikki, I do not remember that. And that, I'm trying to remember what we did. You're talking about when we met back in November. Um, I'm fairly certain it was a, wasn't a Java issue where we had to enable it in Chrome. I apologize, I just don't remember it. And so I'm just going to let this run. I'll minimize it. But the beauty of this system is, again, you've got this lab going on. Uh, you decide you're done. If you click I'm done, the lab ends, and it will return all of these devices to their clean state using a um, snapshot. So click I'm done. I'll actually get rid of that reservation. Okay. Nikki, if you can type in the in the text what you're referring to, I'll try my best to answer it and do it because and folks remember again in here we've got twelve labs and if you want to preview the lab you can also just click to the right. You can see what type of uh what the lab talks about. Here's a peer to peer versus server based. It actually shows you how to do a share out a uh folder, which is by the way, something you need to know for our hacking or our security because there are some default shares available on Windows machines that could occasionally have things on them that you could use. Just remember, folks, all of you, all you students who are here in this, this meeting today, please remember a very important thing I teach my security students. Jail is bad. All right? You don't want to go to jail. You don't want to lose access to your computers at school or get kicked out of school. So a lot of the techniques you're learning in these courses, don't use them on the machines in school. Use these environments I'm giving you to do them in a safe environment where you won't get in trouble, okay? Don't go home and start hacking your neighbors and then cry to me because you got arrested and go to jail. No. These tools are, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So you need to realize that you're learning uh, a great deal about how to get into the systems but you want to be a white hat. You don't want to be a black hat. Oh, okay. It's once you update the Java, it will. You'll have to go in and tell Chrome to allow Java to run, and it actually pops up. It actually pop up and say allow and remember, and that's. I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. Um, but if you update Java and then open one of the different um, devices it will prompt you and ask you to, to accept it. So I'm pretty sure that's that's what it was. Now I want to show you while we're here, okay, because we got a little bit just a little bit more time, I want to show you the network plus pods where you need to be working right now. Then I would suggest go to the security plus pods where there are 16 labs because it's going to teach you things like uh, capturing traffic with TCP dump, uh, all of those items here. And you can see here's the lab for this. It's an Ubuntu box. Which, again, if you don't know Linux, we got a Linux Essentials course for you to go look at. Here's a Kali box, which is, uh, you, with security, Kali box is a, uh, a hacking toolkit, um, excuse me, penetration test toolkit. And then there's, uh, different items out here you can use. But those are for Security Plus, and you can easily, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to notice there are 15 Security Plus pods. I'm going to go ahead and just do that for an hour. And you can make multiple reservations. If you're in multiple classes, uh, now obviously one of the things about it is you can't do two labs simultaneously, but you may want to schedule, you know, one lab now and then in two hours schedule another lab. And notice I did three hours there, which would be fine too. But I'm going to go into the Security Plus lab, and you'll notice again it takes about five to eight minutes for it to boot. And during this time as it's booting, I will ask you for any questions, student questions. 
any student questions, you can speak. You, I see you got some headsets, maybe some microphones. I haven't muted any of you from talking, so if you want to, I think Roku's got a self mute or got the class muted there, but if you want to talk, feel free. When will uh, students have logins to the competition site? Um, Nikki, I will, as soon as I get the list of your students, if you want to email me them, uh, I will uh, get them in. Same for everybody here. If you will email me, I was going to have a central uh, repository and just have it all go to Teresa and have Teresa send it to me. But all of you that are on here, okay, Teresa's already got them. So she sent, if you send them to Teresa yesterday, then I will get those in. Uh, it probably won't be today, it'll be in the morning. Um, but as soon as I can get them in, I'll get them in and I'll have access. So by end of week, they'll have access. I kind of wanted to, I, I, I was making decisions today about how we were going to put them in a class and what class we we're going to put them in. And uh, that, hey Shane, the, uh, that made me want to, to make a decision about how I was going to get them in. So, or get, get, get you students in, those of you who are actually on the, on the, on the side there. Okay, let's see anything else I've got here. Um, Hmm. That's about where I want to be. I want to show you this live here and make sure you're able to to see it and see this ethical hacking pod or this security plus pod. Again, don't forget when you get inside the live the pod itself, your content is right here. So if you want to see your content, just click show live content. And I actually suggest that if you if you can print these out or do what I do and put them on a Google Drive. Keep them on your Google Drive. You've got them there. You can always use them, um, and it will you, know, you have access to them. So, before log into the system, so good, Holly. And I'm in Holly, and it tells me other. So I hit enter. It asks me for username, and let's see, I'm off. I need to delete that one. That's the other part of them. Root and Tor. So typical Kali login, not change. Root and then root backwards. Now we're in Kali Linux. And then it's going to have you go to Ubuntu and log in. And again, you got to depend on what browser you're in, you may have to keep and then pop this open. And student and secure, I believe. Secure password. Which obviously is not very secure. Now we've got a an Ubuntu box that we're in, and we can keep going until we're in all these other boxes. So we got you know basically um, Kali, Ubuntu, and all those available. So actually open that all the way up if you want to and get the full screen for Kali. So there are all kinds of tools here. We'll learn more about them as we move forward. Um, again, top ten security tools. There's AirTrack. There's uh, Metasploit framework, Cisco tools, so you want to do an auditing tool, explore, uh, all types of things here, wireless attacks, which obviously won't work here because these don't have wireless NICs in them. But there's all types of things that you can use on this Kali Linux. Questions? So what you need to do? You need to continue to work in that Network Plus class, the Networking Essentials, well, not Network Plus, I'm sorry, Networking Essentials course that your instructor has put you in on network, uh, netacad.com. So you need to work in that class. Do the labs, do the packet tracers, and get the basic networking knowledge that you will need to understand what an IP address is. What, uh, you know, to run TCP dump to capture ICMP traffic, it's probably a good idea to know what the transport layer is, to know what the different layers of the OSI model are, uh, to know what, when I look at this, what is an IP address? Well, right here, this INET add, that's the IP address of 1.6 with a broadcast of 1.255 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255. Those are items you're going to need to know. That's covered in the Network Essentials course. Then I would probably go forward to, again, the Linux Essentials course, and the cybersecurity, uh, intro to cybersecurity. And then you can start doing the labs in Network Plus and then do the other labs as you see fit. 
Does that make sense to everyone? I don't want to keep you much more than an hour because I know you are busy and you're at school, but I want you to, to be, feel free to ask me questions. Uh, feel free to ask your instructor to send me questions. I'm going to stop sharing my desktop. Anything that we can do to help you, I will get your logins to competitions.stanley.edu up and running um, tomorrow if I have your name from your instructor. And then you will actually, uh, I will send each instructor that sent me those names, I will send you a list of the names and initial passwords. Initial passwords can be Cisco123 for your students. Um, Megan, and I think I'm going to just move your students over. So they've already got, I uh, see most of them have logged in. They'll be moved over uh, here in just a few minutes. And then they can test their login if they want to do that. So we can kind of test it and make sure they, they have access. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.